Good morning, 1313 Podcast. Welcome back, all you regs, and for you shinies, welcome to the 1313 Podcast. I thought we were going to say it at the same time. <laughs> it's like, bro. This is the most mediocre podcast in the Star Wars universe. We are your hosts. I'm Tommy. I'm Jacob. I'm Jackson. And we got to talk about Star Wars today. We're going to talk about Star Wars again. Again. What else is new? Oh my god, there's a squirrel outside. Oh. Is he oh, running yeah. on the fence? Yeah, there's a squirrel out there. Yeah, he, yeah they do that, bro. He, he do be doing that sometimes. <laughs> so, um, not a lot going on. Star Wars. No, no more Sad Batch again. But, 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 Visions does start next month. That's mm-hmm. okay. The Lego Star Wars trailer came out. I want to talk about Mando Gallery. Oh, I didn't watch it yet, so... You didn't what? watch it? I don't have time! Yes, you, you do! What? Shut up, because here's the stupid excuse everyone has. They're like, I don't have time! I'm like, it is 30 minutes of your life. You have 30 <clears throat> minutes that you sit around and you're on social media or you're on TikTok. You have time. Jackson, I spent all yesterday reading some dumb book called it Sophie's It didn't come book. out yesterday. It didn't come out yesterday. Jackson, yesterday was the only free day I had. I want to hear y'all bull crap. I don't want to hear y'all bull crap. I got stuff to do. <laughs> Screw both of you. You can talk about it. I just, I can't contribute to the conversation because I haven't seen it yet. Come and see the new Broadway musical Jacob's College Experience. <laughs> Spring of 2022. Jacob's like, I'm about to be like Kanye and drop an album called College <laughs> Dropout after two weeks of being in it. <laughs> I won't be here no more. <laughs> so, um... Mando Gallery came out. Yes. I enjoyed it. It was cool. I really um, liked it. I liked the behind the scenes stuff that they started doing. I kind of wish they would do that for more things as well. I mean, like the movies and then like, what if they did one for like the Bad Batch? That could be pretty funny or I don't know. But granted, they can do more with the Mandalorian because it is revolutionary. Mm-hmm. It was very touching. I liked it. Mm-hmm. Um, there, were, there were definitely parts in there where I was like, um, very moved by the messages that they were pushing about, like, the community mm-hmm. and about, like, how the fandom is. Don't start um, watching it now. No, 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 I'm just gonna watch it right now while you guys talk about it. Um, <laughs> so, uh... <laughs> That's copyright! Oh! <laughs> <laughs> so, uh... So, yeah, but, I mean, there's not much to say other than, like, it was mainly about how they did the effects for Luke Skywalker. Yeah. Um, spoilers if you haven't seen The Mandalorian Season 2. Oops. But everybody has at this point. Or at least heard of what happened. Yeah. Yeah. Um but yeah, I really I really did like the messages that it was that it was like pushing about like the fandom and mm-hmm. um how people can have such a strong connection with Star Wars. Um I found myself really like captivated by it. Um turn turn that off. Bro, just stop watching it. No, bro. Alright. The only thing I want to contribute to the Mando Gallery before <clears throat> we move on is that I really thought what like blew my mind was that like to hide Luke Skywalker originally that Dave Filoni put Plo Koon. Oh yeah. And that and that. then there was concept art made for Plo Koon to like throw off people that might have wanted Who's to Plo Koon? It. Plo Koon is the Jedi General for the 104th Wolf Battalion back in the Clone Wars. Oh, really? Who's that? Bro, why are you looking at me like this now? Why are you acting so rude, bro? I'm just trying to set the show off and you're already trying to bust me, bro. Bro, all I've ever seen in my life is the Mandalorian. Oh, I do be loving Baby Yoda, though. Get me some more of that memorabilia in my Walmart. It's I, nothing but Baby Yoda merch. Honestly, please. like, I, I honestly, if Plo Koon, like, would have, if that would have got leaked that it was Plo Koon, I probably would have believed it because it's Dave Filoni yeah. and that's his favorite Jedi. Exactly, bro. I, I was like, it. what if that got leaked or what if it actually happened oh, that it was Plo Koon? I think it would have been hilarious if they purposefully leaked it. Yeah. But then you would have had the fandom being like, this ain't Plo Koon at all. <laughs> bro, I thought it was going to be Plo Koon. Disney, they they took away Plo Koon from Star Wars, and instead they did Luke Skywalker. Granted, when I'm really thinking about it, I don't know how long Plo Koon's species lives. I mean, and it's probably a really long time. Doesn't matter. He blew up. I mean, yeah, he blew. 
Doesn't he matter how long. Blew well, he's up got, he looks like he has a spongy texture. He probably could have just <laughs> and just like lived. Because everybody wants to see that Mace Windu's alive. I'm like, fell after falling from that height. I really doubt he's alive. Well, we said that about Darth Maul too. After he got cut in half. We first. said that about Palpatine too. After he literally got disintegrated in the Death Star 2. But that's different because he resurrected like through the Force and through their cloning bullcrap. Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah? Yeah, but Darth Maul didn't. Every time a character falls down a pit in Star Wars. Both both they fell live to some pit. Guess who back? Bonga yeah, Fett. yeah, yeah. So Mace Windu is definitely. What do you alive. mean by that? What do you mean by that? <laughs> Shut up. So uh, right. there's there was really not much to say on the Mando gallery. I I just really liked it. Actually, one thing. Okay. And then um, also bear with me because I am recovering from a <clears throat> head cold, so I am all doped up on. Many, many cough drops right now. But, f- you know. Man just said he was doped up on cough drops. <laughs> <laughs> so. <laughs> Ricola! I don't know why I just thought of that. What's your story? Okay, though? my what's father and I were talking about the episode after we watched it, and yeah. he basically was like, um. I'm so sorry, I lost my train of thought. Let me get back on this. All aboard! All right. So my dad was saying that um, Luke's fighting style, remember when they were talking about Luke's fighting style? Um, And he was talking about how, like, it couldn't be this, like, masterful, you know, form one or, you know, like, one of the seven forms of combat because Luke never had a formal saber training partner. And then he also mentions that Ahsoka is his senior, technically. So, my theory is Ahsoka trains Luke Skywalker how to do lightsaber combat. I feel like that would be a little bit more appropriate because, yeah, they did talk about how Luke's style and this needed to be just like, again, not masterful, but a bit better than what we saw in Return of the Jedi. And the flailing that was Return of the Jedi. No, but what do you mean? He was perfectly fine. There was nothing wrong with this lightsaber combat. It was perfect training. He had perfect training. How could that have happened? Oh, but Ray didn't. But Ray didn't. (sighs) How come uh, Ray just flails her lightsaber around? (laughs) I can't Ray just flails her lightsaber. Yeah. Why did Ben stop stabbing at her? Why is he so sad after his mom died? Yeah. <laughs> All right. But moving on to other things. Let's talk about some more interesting things. Like the uh, trailer for Lego Star Wars The Skywalker Saga. Yeah, I'd be very excited. That looks very good. Dude, that thing <clears throat> looks amazing. I, was pretty exciting. I didn't really care that it said it was pushed back until spring, spring of 2022. Like, Maybe a bit sad. It's but, been pushed back so much at this point. And I can just see how good it looks, you know, already. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. My, my only, like, uh, like thing that made me upset was that it was just spring 2022. So that means that it may might be subject to get pushed back again because they don't have a hard and fast date. That's okay. So I'm just kind of like, oh. That's okay. I just want to play the game. I get it. I feel like what I really feel like and what I kind of predict is going to happen is I feel like the game will not meet everybody's expectations on it because it isn't the original Lego Star Wars. And it's going to suck because of that. It, it, it. (sighs) And so, yeah, I feel like... Why don't they mumble? Well, I'm predicting right now, so we'll see, I guess, if I'm true in a year if when the game comes out eventually. But is that, like, if people play it and they either, like, really, really actually do like it and they're willing to accept it as the new game or they're going to be like... It isn't fun, and I don't like this because it's it isn't. not a carbon copy of Star Wars: The Complete Saga. Because I just know that's gonna happen. I know because it's like people are so in love with Star Wars, with Lego Star Wars: The Complete Saga, that they want it to be the same. But it's like you have to understand because like none of these Lego games are like what they were back in the day. It has all these new mechanics. Personally, I'm not a, a huge fan of like. Um, the mechanic where it's like you sit around and you peek out and shoot. It's like, 
I'm not a huge fan of that. I kind of like the old Lego style where you can like run around and then it like kind of like auto aims for you and you're just like reminds me of like I don't know if you guys ever played, but I used to play the Gears of War games. Yeah, yeah that, that's exactly what I was going to say. It's the Gears of War mechanic where you go to cover and then you shoot somebody and, the, and then you go to the next piece of cover and you do that. And, and it's the like the problem is, is I don't like Gears of War. So I love Gears of War. I never but was the Gears of War three was the first campaign for a video game that I beat for like a shooter game. Nice. But yeah, I'm just not a fan of that style, like, a lot. But I mean, I'm going to try it with Lego Star Wars, you know? Because mm -hmm. that isn't, like, the only thing, though. Because The lightsaber combat kind of is different. Yeah, lightsaber combat is different. That was definitely noticeable in the trailer. Mm -hmm. But it the looks game just really looks good. good. The boss fights look cool. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I agree. So I'm really willing to give it a shot, because it's got that open world and the... I think it was good, actually, too, that they showed us, like in a way, like, what the fast travel is going to look like when you're going to different Yeah, planets. it's literally just all the <clears throat> planets right there. All the planets, you click on it, and then it takes you, like, immediately there. It so is, you like, could probably you're pick so your far shit. away. Well, no, that's the thing. It's probably. not it's not necessarily just fast travel. There's supposed to be the ability where you go up into space first, kind of like going into orbit in Destiny, but instead of just looking at your ship, you can control your ship. Mm-hmm. Also, there's supposed to be, like, random battles, so, like, if you're piloting a Venator, and you come out of hyperspace, you could meet, like, a Separatist Dreadnought, and then you fight it. Mm -hmm. So there's supposed to be, like, in-space battles, and I think there actually is a space-to-ground transition, which would be cool. Mm -hmm. Either way, I know the game is huge, and I know the team that's been working on it has been working incredibly hard, mm -hmm. and I understand that, like, <laughs> the delays are all COVID-related, and they're not, like, like, just them being lazy or, you know, stuff I've like that. I don't think they're all COVID related. I think they were at first, but I think now they're just like they're like, what can we improve now? Because mm -hmm. if you looked at the graphics from the first trailer to this one, it's oh like my gosh, it's night and day. I didn't think it could get better when I watched the first trailer, mm -hmm. and it did. And then I watched this, and it literally is like cinematic. Mm -hmm. Exactly, because that's the other thing too is that like a game trailer will release like a year before the game does, and graphics will improve, and then. The game comes out and it's kind of like of lower graphics because there's new stuff out that they couldn't upgrade it because they're making it to the what was the standard at the time but it's like i feel like with this they're like trying to overhaul it you know yeah <clears throat> makes me want to get one of them new consoles so i could see it all nice you're gonna have to <laughs> at some point probably yeah yeah well you know that that's really all i have to say on that trailer yeah same mm -hmm. here spring 2022 <clears throat> It's gonna, it's gonna knock him out. Yeah, it's gonna get pushed back. It mm -hmm. could, but I'm okay with that. I, at this point, like I said, it's been pushed back so many times that I'm. And again, this is one of those things I'm excited for it, but I, I was never like super hyped, like gonna pee my pants excited, like I was for like Mando or the Bad yeah. Batch or like how I'll be <clears throat> for the Book of Boba Fett. Yeah. So I'm the only one here that's super excited about it. <laughs> And that's okay. So we have uh, another topic this week. Sure. We've been, again, we did some brainstorming. And uh, with the absence of a new Star Wars like TV show mm -hmm. for us to talk about, we like to come up with a topic. We decided to end class early, so y'all are dismissed. Bye-bye. If no. you, as a viewer or a listener, have a suggestion... As to a topic you would like to hear us talk about on the podcast, be sure to put it in the comments and let us know, and we will consider talking about it for a future episode. For today's episode, I would like to talk about one of my favorite aspects of Star Wars, being the Jedi and the Sith. Mm -hmm. Interestingly enough, the Jedi and the Sith used to not be, I used to not really care about them, like at all. I just like the clones, I like the stormtroopers, yeah. that was it. But then I really grew to like the Jedi and the Sith and the lore that comes with them. Mm -hmm. And the Ashton lore that surrounds Logan. the Fourth. So, let's kick it off. Let's talk Jedi versus Sith. Well, uh, one's got a blue lightsaber, one's got a red lightsaber. That's all you really gotta know. So, um, <laughs> in Black Series news, no. <laughs> so, uh, who would like to go first? Who would like to, would anyone like to... Uh, Mainly I'm saying that because I'm I'm going to sneeze and I would like to dismiss myself. Sure. So, 
I don't know. I guess your little quick Star Wars fact of the day about the Jedi and the Sith, since that's kind of like the topic that we're doing right now. Dude, Tommy (laughs) tried getting up for our audio listeners, and he (laughs) is like hooked on the table, and he fell backward and knocked over one of his... My Navi knees! (laughs) So, if you remember from... uh, Nebuchadnezzar. Comes out like it's really nice. So if you remember from Star Wars Rebels, uh, the Bendu talks about the Ashla and Bogan. So essentially, the Ashla is the ancient name for the old, well, like the old uh, order of the Jedi. And then the Bogan is what would... Uh, I'll Sith- be back. Okay. Tommy has what left Sith podcast. Sith Force users would be called. So, mentions that in Rebels. I know the two holocons that we have for the display because we're talking about Jedi and Sith today. Wow. They're from the ga- they're from Galaxy's Edge and then when you combine them it's the Bendu talking. Yeah, we'll just, we'll just we'll do it just to show them cuz why not? Why not? Yeah. <laughs> well, they might not be able to hear it well. Uh, just put it near the mic. Hopefully this stuff not keep. So you put them together. Uh, I'm supposed to put them together. Put them together. There we go. And then they turn purple. Kind of like how in Rebels when Ezra and Maul put theirs together. And then you touch the button. Jedi and Sith wield the Ashlar and Bogan. The light and the dark. I'm the one in the middle. The Bendu. So that's what we talked about. Yeah. That's what we mean. I mean by that. But I guess as Tommy reapproaches into the room, I guess. Tom, if you had to choose, what do you like better, the Jedi or the Sith? Definitely the Jedi. Definitely the Sith, in my opinion. I am, I'm, I'm, uh, bro, don't be looking at me at me like that, bro. Sit down and let's... <laughs> let's talk about let's, this. Let's have a chat. Let's All right, thank chat. you again. Like I said, I, I apologize. I am dealing with a head cold, and I'm on the tail end of it, but it is what it is. So, I don't get an opinion. The Jedi. What's your favorite, Jacob? I don't know. I really like them both. Okay. <laughs> well, so here's here's where I'm at with the Force itself, okay? Mm-hmm. So the Jedi and the Sith make this divide in the Force, and they make things, like certain skills and abilities, like, forbidden. Mm-hmm. Right? So, like, for the Jedi... They make it so that you can't have attachments. They, yes. Part of the Jedi code is is not to form attachments because it could lead you to the dark side of the Force. Mm-hmm. However, that is something that creates the downfall of the Jedi because yeah. it, it hinders a Jedi's abilities to be compassionate, which is also part of the Jedi code. I agree. How can you be compassionate if you don't know how to care about other people? Because you can definitely see that with Kanan. Because yeah. Kanan is a Jedi who is able to have a relationship and attachments to not mm-hmm. only his Padawan, but to his, I'm assuming I'm going to say wife. But, you know, I feel like that really works out well because it's like you literally, you just don't. So it's like, never mind, you continue. I guess I'll talk more about like the ignorance of the Jedi. Order. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so the Jedi are supposed to represent everything virtuous in, in Star Wars. They're supposed to be the keepers of the peace. Yeah. And I've seen it said before that, you know, in the in the context of the Clone Wars, mm-hmm. the Jedi <clears throat> lost... The Jedi Order fell the second the Jedi became generals in the Clone Wars. Correct. And I wholeheartedly agree with that statement. Because for Jedi, they are only supposed to use their abilities in defense or to or for knowledge. That's it. Like, mm-hmm. those are the only two reasons that they should use the Force. And so when the Jedi start, you know, leading soldiers into battle and becoming soldiers themselves... Yeah. That's it. They've, they've, they've already turned their backs on everything that they hold dear without even really realizing it. Mm-hmm. I totally agree. Just because, again, yeah, that is the whole ignorance. Is You want to meet this extremely high standard, but in the process of meeting your standard, you shut off your morality and mm-hmm. basically yourself. Because essentially, yeah, like what you're saying, as soon as the Clone War started, the Jedi became so ignorant, obviously, that they were abandoning their old ways and they weren't doing things like how they were supposed to, mm-hmm. that that's how they fell. Well, they also got too political. Exactly. I think the I think the Jedi really turned their back on what they believed when they decided that 
it'd be a good idea to foster as many of them as they possibly could and thinking that just having only the light side would bring the balance to the force like it needs to be evenly weighed like that's why the rule of two was created in the sith because at the time jedi would be like if there's only two sith we can only have really two jedi because that balances the force and then they said "Mm, let's get like a billion jedi together so technically uh, at the end of episode three anakin does bring balance to the force by leaving behind two Sith and two Jedi, Obi-Wan. Well, Yoda. technically, okay, you can technically more, Jedi more Jedi lived. lived. Yeah, but I don't even and understand the, the how, like, Yoda in the Clone Wars could say that there was balance in the Force to begin with, because there wasn't, because of the amount of... Because they thought they completely exterminated the Sith. So then the scale is completely screwed up, because there is no opposite uh, way to outweigh the Jedi. And so that's where I feel like there's a big misconception with how a lot of people see Jedi. A lot of people say they want to see like an R-rated Star Wars film or like an R-rated Star Wars TV show or something. Um, And they want to see like, oh, I want to see a Jedi kick ass, basically. Yeah. That's not what a Jedi is. That's not Mm -hmm. the type of character that a Jedi is should be do about darth vader though you could do it about darth vader because he's a sith lord yeah but also for me it's just not really about how he kills people and oh i want to see him just you know just tear people limb from limb and blah 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 (laughs) for me it's like i'm more interested in the overarching like story and the things that you can take away from it you know what i mean the messages Mm -hmm. Um, But yeah, like a Jedi is not supposed to cut people up and like, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Just destroy everything in front of them. That, that's just not, that's not how the force works. (laughs) Like it's, it's interesting because it just shows that there are a lot of people who have very different views on Star Wars Mm -hmm. and there are a lot of people that see things very differently. Mm -hmm. Um, So like for me... I, w- I would never want to see something like that. And that's why I'm yeah. very excited for Visions, because you get to see a lot of it's like the Jedi portrayed as samurai. Yes. And the samurai, you know, unless they were, in real life, unless they were directly ordered by the Emperor to, like, completely destroy, like, a village or something, Yeah. they were the protectors. You know, they were the ones who, they only fought if they had to. But if they fought, they were going to win. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, that. that's... They were protecting, and and they were very they were very smart. You know what I mean. So, I'm very interested to see in visions how the Jedi how the Jedi are portrayed as literal samurai. Mm-hmm. I uh, agree. I personally, I don't think I would be too upset if we really got like an R-rated Darth Vader movie. I'm not gonna labor for it. But it won't happen. It won't happen. But I feel like that would be really cool, just because you know you know how powerful Darth Vader is, and you know what he really could do. So if they look like if they just if they showed it off just once, I feel like they'd be pretty cool. But I mean, like we kind of have like some idea of how powerful the force is when we see Star Killer literally disintegrate an entire battalion. Just that's you, that's yeah, the other that thing is canonical though. Yeah, so. is like <clears throat> excuse me, like you look at um stuff in Legends. Yeah, force users are so overpowered. Overpowered. Yeah, that you could never. It just it, it's just not doable in the canon universe mm-hmm. because everything in the canon universe is still kind of grounded. Mm-hmm. So like here's a theory too. <clears throat> Going back to like the Jedi, mm-hmm. um, an interesting thought that I had is so if the Jedi are stuck on you know don't have attachments, mm-hmm. the only Jedi that we've seen use like Force heal. Is yeah. Grogu and Rey. Yes. That's it. Do you think that that's because the Jedi could very well have that ability, but they choose not to learn that ability because it's, like, against their teaching of have no attachments? Because if you, if, if say, like, a Jedi, the fellow Jedi you care about gets shot, mm-hmm. and you know that you could literally just go up to them and heal them, mm-hmm. that could come out of your own selfish like want to keep them alive 
as in a form of attachment. So the Jedi would be like, oh, we don't want that happening, so we're not going to teach that skill. I guess I could <clears throat> understand that, but then at the same time, I feel like it may have just never... It possibly would have just not been discovered at that time. Mm. Because it's like, the Force is so complex that you need to like study it for like ever and ever. So it's like, I know when Grogu and Rey used the heal, like the automatic response was like, well, like, why didn't people know this in the Clone Wars and yes. stuff? And it's like, I think what people need to understand, too, about the prequels is that because the Jedi were so ignorant, they abandoned, like, the traditional ways of, like, studying the old texts. The only person that did that was Qui-Gon Jinn, mm -hmm. which is why he knew the prophecy of the Chosen One and why he was so about having Anakin join the Jedi Order to begin with. Because the Jedi quite literally weren't even paying attention to their own history or choosing to learn because they were too consumed about being political and staying up in the Republic, you know what I mean? So I feel like that would be a good explanation though, like why like nobody knew how to do that in the Clone Wars and how that wouldn't have been discovered really until Rey's time through studying the text because Grogu just so happened to do it. But then my theory with that is that his species is just so force sensitive that they can just, right. I mean, obviously do that, you know? Mm. It's, I like what you brought up about like the Jedi, like basically stopping mm. learning anything. Yeah. Cause they did, they didn't learn anymore. I mean, you got that whole library on Coruscant and it's like, sure, you see it in an arc or two of like the Clone Wars with like holocrons filled with knowledge and all these texts from old Jedi and it's like none of them really read any of that from our knowledge. We never see anybody go get a holocron and study it. And really that's <clears throat> what probably part of the reason made the Sith be able to take over. Exactly. Is that the Jedi weren't getting their money up, not their funny up basically. <laughs> and the Sith were able to keep growing their power. Mm -hmm. Now at the same time you know, the dark side is a perverted way of the Force. Yeah. That's how it's described. Mm -hmm. But honestly, like, in a way, the way that the Jedi were in the prequel era is probably a different kind of perverted way of using the Force. I would, you know, because yeah. they were hiding things from their pupils. They weren't showing them the entire picture mm -hmm. and telling them that there's a dark side and stuff like that. You know what I mean? Like, they were just trying to hide it from them. Mm -hmm. And they were trying to keep things from them, which only makes children more curious exactly because that's the other thing as well it's like with anything if you want to under if you want to be able to like defend something you need to understand like why people might not like it or you have to understand the other side so i feel like by the jedi refusing to teach the younglings or at least educate them more about the dark side is what would turn so many jedi that we would see to the dark side because it's so tempting you know what i mean so it's I forget the dude from the clone, the dude who talks like this, Kenobi, who has like the dreads and oh, stuff. Oh, Quinlan Voss. Quinlan Voss, because in the Dark Disciple book, he turns to the dark side. And then yeah. Obviously, you see that happen with so many other Jedi, like Mayor Sophie and whatnot. But Pong it, Krell, and Count yep, Dooku. Yeah, because they become so obsessed with the dark side and what it could have to offer besides the, lark, the light side, because... Oh, don't forget Anakin. Well, well because yeah. that's, the, that's the pull to the dark side, is... Being a Jedi requires you know, patience and, you know, you have to take the time to learn your skill and, like, you know, keep beating on your craft and, and really kind of make sure that you are sharpening your skills all the time. Mm -hmm. Whereas the dark side offers you this immediate access to power mm -hmm. and it, it takes everything from you in return. I mean, just look at yeah. everything that it's taken from Maul, yeah. Vader, um, Dooku, like mm -hmm. other, you know, even Palpatine. Yeah. It's, it just, it takes the, it literally takes the life out of them. I know. Darth Maul essentially lives a completely worthless life consumed by rage and revenge from the dark side to kill Obi-Wan, only to never achieve that goal and to become disappointed in the end, in fact. But I mean, like, obviously, spoiler for Rebels, if you haven't seen the end of it, I guess, I apologize. But, in, but I mean, it's like at the end of Rebels, when he dies, he at least finds, like, some, uh, peace. yeah, some peace yeah. in the fact that the Chosen One is out there, and that he'll fix everything. But then again, at the same time, he dies 
hoping for revenge of exactly. all things, which just goes to show that the dark side has just completely mm-hmm. consumed him. I yeah. just, I feel like the the dark side is like the heroine of the force. It starts out like a good Pause. idea, and it, it's Facts. really cool, Facts. and it's really like it gives you a nice rush. Yeah, as but recovering as goes, heroin addicts. As recovering 13, heroin 13 addicts. podcast does not condone the use of uh, drugs. heroin. <laughs> but no, and the, but then as it goes on, it just slowly ruins your life. So like, I mean, it's like sure, okay, I I'll buy it. I can see exactly how you can compare that because mm-hmm. it, yeah. it starts on it's just like oh it feels good it's great and then you're just like oh I'm in the McDonald's bathroom and I'm dying <laughs> <laughs> okay okay <laughs> that's a little too much I Darth, really Darth Maul be in the space McDonald's bathroom <laughs> hey, 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 hey okay let's cut on that let's okay. cut on that bit. Like, that's gonna be a little bit too much so uh but yeah it and like Darth Maul is a perfect representation of what the dark side can take from you exactly but also what it can do for you Mm -hmm. it literally kept a dead man alive for over Mm -hmm. probably about a decade Mm -hmm. honestly be just because of his one singular hatred for one man Mm -hmm. like that is insane that you can channel that much of the dark side to keep you alive for that long Mm -hmm. until it drove him crazy but he was still alive yeah but like yeah i mean i it just it blows my mind Mm -hmm. like it that's that's the storytelling that i like in star wars i Mm -hmm. that was i I think honestly that's what has made me so like obsessed with star wars is the force aspect of it because mm-hmm. it's so mystical and yeah there's like the mini chlorians and there's like oh well we can't explain away like the jedi and the sith and blah blah, mm-hmm. blah. but the force itself there's still so much to learn from it mm-hmm. and there's so much to do with it the the learning curve will never end Mm-hmm. Exactly. There will always be a new power coming out. There will always be like a new oh, new force update just dropped. <laughs> <laughs> new ability. Um, but like that's literally how it is. I yeah. feel like my favorite part of the force isn't necessarily like the new abilities and stuff. It's the kind of like, it's the things that are connected through the force that are just like yeah, not, like uh, Gate Between Worlds, like that episode. That's sick. Yeah. That's super cool. It's just like it's one of those things where it's like you don't really think of, and then the fact that the Loth Wolves are so powerful with the Force. Yes. They can teleport basically throughout the fall. The uh, Purgles. Purgle, yeah. It's they just, can literally use hyperdrive. Yeah, they said. Space. They said rainbow. But no, I feel like those aspects of Star Wars I like a lot because it's like it's more creative storytelling, and it's not just. Uh, this is war, and we can use the Force. It uh, connects, because they say everything's connected through the Force, so why not show that off? I think that's what's mm-hmm. got me so excited about Kenobi. Yes. More so than seeing Ewan McGregor play Obi-Wan. More so than seeing Hayden Christensen play Vader. More so than seeing those two fight. The mo- the thing that has me the most excited for this show mm-hmm. is because I know we're going to learn so much more about the Force. Yeah. We're going to see Obi-Wan's training that he was given by Yoda to basically learn how to be immortal mm-hmm. and be one with the Force in physical form. Hopefully they will show that, but yeah, I agree. And and we're going to... I think we definitely will. I mean, it's about... The, the, the main protagonist and antagonist are two of the most powerful Force users that we know in Star Wars. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, like... They're totally going to talk about the Force in the show. Mm-hmm. Like, we're going to get a lot more knowledge, I think. I would certainly hope so. It would be yeah. really cool. I'm so excited for that show. Oh, it's going to be a phenomenal Did you show. see some of the, um, there's some leaked set pictures of Vader? Yeah. Yes. There's, there's like, concept art that was leaked to Vader, but it's, like, Anakin in the Bakta tank mm. and stuff, which I'm really excited to see. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I'm so excited for the show. But, like, again, the Force is just so fascinating to me. Mm-hmm. And, again, I used to not really care for it, mm-hmm. like I said at the beginning of this conversation. Mm-hmm. I, I used to really not care at all. I was more of, like, a, ooh, clone troopers, I, which I still I still am. Mm-hmm. But yeah. it's, like... It ain't nothing wrong with that. But, yeah, but, like, the Force just, like, that's probably my favorite story aspect of Star Wars because it, it never ends. Mm-hmm. Yes. I feel like the biggest thing that I want to bring up as well that I really like... It's so, like, 
the one way that I saw it described was that the force is comparable to like uh, Christianity specifically. So like you can choose to be, I guess per se, like in the light or in the dark, like, and you can be converted back either both ways. You know what I mean? So it's like in a lot of stories, you're born into an ultimate good and you're stuck with that. Like you cannot change or you're born into the ultimate evil, but evil can become good. But good could also become evil if tempted, you know what I mean? Which I thought was a really cool thing. The other thing I really want to talk about really quick is how, because of that, there is no middle. There is no such thing as a gray Jedi I, but, but, or the but, middle but, of the Bendu. But I am the Bendu. Okay, the Bendu is the only exception I'm to the that. I'm the one in the middle. <laughs> no, because here's where I'm pulling this information from, too. It was an interview done with the gentleman who voices Kanan. I forget his name. And I, Freddie Prince Jr. Yes, it was an interview with Freddie Prince Jr. And he was talking about that Dave Filoni sat him down and basically explained that there's no such thing as a gray Jedi and there's no such thing as like a middle way between the Force because of those two truths. Because you are an ultimate good or you are an ultimate evil. You can't be, you can't choose to be good and then choose to be evil, you know? Because it's it's literally one or the other. Because then, if you're a gray Jedi, everyone's gonna be a freaking gray Jedi. Because then, because oh, then there's the no way. consequences for your actions. And exactly. in like a story, from a story's perspective, because I I used to think the idea of a gray Jedi was cool, and I still yes. think that. I think that the idea of a gray Jedi is cool, certainly. But it's the it's the idea of it. But from a story perspective. None of their actions hold any consequences. Exactly. Then, you know, and and that's the whole thing about the force is when you use the force, mm -hmm. there are consequences to what you do with it. So when you're a gray Jedi and you just have no consequences and you just have this, you know, your moral compass is just ambiguous mm -hmm. and you just, you know, well, I can just do whatever I want whenever I want. And there's no real consequences. That's not a that's not a character that like would drive like a TV show or something. Mm -hmm. It's Ahsoka. <clears throat> She's not a Jedi. I, I do like that there's Force users <clears throat> that are not Jedi or Sith. They're just Force users. Mm -hmm. But yeah, then that's the other thing as well. Well, what do you describe someone who's a Force wielder like Ahsoka? You know, she isn't a part of the Jedi Order, but she isn't a Sith. I think, I think Ahsoka represents what the Jedi Order should be. Correct. I, I, I think do that, agree with that. And, yeah. you know, I think the same thing about... Honestly, <clears throat> I think the same thing about Rey. They mm -hmm. represent what the Jedi Order should have been. Yeah. And what the Jedi Order was Jedi before Order. the prequels. You know what yeah. I mean? Like In that's the High what, Republic. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's what they represent. Mm -hmm. And honestly, it's like they represent almost like the old way, mm -hmm. which is like the way <laughs> of it's okay to have attachments and it's yes. okay. But then again... We will definitely see this in Ahsoka's like TV show, but yes, I definitely feel like that. Um, she still has struggles. Mm -hmm. That's the other thing that I like about because that is the thing. They're not gray Jedi, yes, but they are relatable characters with struggles. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You see, in Episode Nine, you see Ray struggle that entire movie. Mm -hmm. Struggle with who she is, <clears throat> what these powers are. You know, and and with Ahsoka more is what I want to talk about now is with Ahsoka, she tells Din, I'm not training Rogu because I've seen what can happen to a Jedi yeah. that gets, you know, that gets too, too attached. attached. Mm -hmm. She still has fears and she still has stuff that she's grappling with that, and she still has stuff that she hasn't faced yet mm -hmm. that she needs to figure out. So I'm ex I, it makes me feel good that these characters, they don't just have an arc and then they're done, and then they're just this stagnant character mm -hmm. forever. Exactly. Because characters in Star Wars, in my opinion, never become perfect. Even Yoda. Every single character in Star Wars has struggles that they are dealing with constantly. You know, Yoda has to deal with the failure that he didn't predict this ultimate uh, ending, and that the entire Jedi Order is gone, and there's nothing that he can do about it now. You know what I mean? But although he is a wise character, he struggles with that. And I feel like the importance of the struggle is there so that we as people can relate to the characters that George created in yes. the universe. Yes, yes. Which I really like. And that's the other thing about, like, the Bad Batch. The characters are relatable. 
the characters yes. have struggles that we as everyday people can relate to. Mm-hmm. As neat as it is to have just this, you know, super virtuous character that, you know, just is infallible in every <laughs> single way. Yeah. That character, born. yeah, that character stays stagnant. Mm-hmm. That, I agree. Yeah. You know, and every that's what it's Honestly, this. like if Luke Skywalker was that in the sequels, that's what it would have been to me personally. Mm-hmm. Like it would have been like a stagnant character because if he's exactly how he was in Return of the Jedi, his character arc would have just been this. Whereas you get to see this extra arc mm-hmm. come out of that now, you see him in Mando, that's yeah. a perfect way to show Luke, because he's, he is in the same spot as he was in Return of the Jedi, yeah. but he's a supporting character in that story. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He is not a central character to that story like he was in The Last Jedi. Luke Skywalker is a central character in that movie. Mm-hmm. So... When you have a central character, you can't have them not have an arc of storytelling. Yeah. Um, I mean, that's why, like, Mace Windu, Mace Windu doesn't really have much of an arc in the prequels. You know, he doesn't have much of a development, but that's mm-hmm. because he's a supporting character. The story is not about Mace Windu. If you give him his own story arc, people are going to focus, it's going to take the focus away from Anakin and Obi-Wan. Yeah. Because that's who the story is about at the end of the day. Anakin, Padme, and Obi-Wan. Mm-hmm. So, but yeah, that's, I mean, with with the Force, it's just so complex, and there's so much to it. Yeah. And I I really like when they do new things with it. And I really like when there's new abilities that we've never seen before. Yep. Um, and and I, I just really... Mm-hmm. I really want to see more, and I think that the shows that they're doing and the books that they're doing are giving us that. You know, the more mystical aspect of Star Wars. I had a whole whole thought, and I completely forgot it. So. <sighs> hey. Sorry, buddy. Hey, it's okay. But, uh, yeah, I think I think that about wraps up what we had to talk about there. I mean... For, yeah, I, I would agree. There's not too much really else to say other than good side, bad side. <laughs> Good we guy, can bad move guy. On to the good segment, the whack series. So let's talk about. Want to show off your goodies? I'm gonna let's do weekly pickups last. Oh, okay, mm-hmm. okay. So there's there's just little inklings of news for action figure collecting. Yeah, which we finally have more news and more stuff this week for the black series, which. I guess I am okay with because we did have like a few dry weeks and I feel like that's an appropriate break and now it's starting to come back up again. You're getting the ball rolling again. I actually don't mind a longer break. Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, I we're agree. still technically... My wallet doesn't mind a longer <laughs> break. I think we're going to have this until the end of October. Yes. Maybe. Which kind of sucks, but at the same time, it gives me a lot of time to just mm-hmm. like, you know, focus on school, get through the first part of the semester. Yep, mm-hmm. I agree. So... I'll more of the, quick. Mm-hmm. so like more of the crosshair, like Imperial Crosshair and Rex Wave. Are yeah, yeah, yeah. Those are those are also Canada. coming out between now and then, mm-hmm. which I yes. forget about as well. So those are kind of mapped out. So that'll be nice. Mm-hmm. We'll get to have those before Hascon. Mm-hmm. But the, more of them are coming out in, in Canada right now. But Canada yeah. only. They haven't crossed the border yet, which I don't understand. And that's okay. Mm-hmm. That's okay right now because I at this moment I don't need to be hunting at Walmart, but it is going to happen soon. Well, I would just I would I would like my Rex figures because they they actually they didn't wait for the pre order to ship. They straight just took my money already. So, and they yeah. didn't give it back. I've been checking. They did not give it back. So they refunded me for the Tarkovsky. Mm-hmm. So which I was yeah, a little yeah. confused about. Mm-hmm. So yeah, they they have a hundred of my dollars for Rex figures, and I would like those soon. <laughs> so, uh, well, I think it's good they took your money because that probably means that the figures will actually show up instead mm-hmm. of them putting them all in the pegs. Oh, or they'll just <laughs> refund my money after they peg them all. So, um, whoa, there's been a lot of drama around the latest wave of the TVC, right? With Ahsoka, Echo, Maul. Yes. Yep. I, which I think is absolutely ridiculous. The, the, the figures that I pre-ordered in January... So, yeah, how can uh, pre-orders getting canceled from Target, but then the pre-orders reopening through Target, and now if you bought them through Amazon, they're shipping, and it's 
it's just a mess i feel like it, especially mm-hmm. i feel really bad for those tvc collectors that wanted the clone wars figures you know you because it's them. like a year was it a year ago no two years ago almost we got the season finale of clone wars um no that was a year ago probably a year Pardon. and a half yeah mm-hmm. We got the uh, last season of Clone Wars uh, Black Series figures, mm-hmm. the Walmart wave. So, uh, I mean, I very much can see how TVC collectors have been all like, well, I want season seven Star- Clone Wars figures too. And now they're finally getting them, but they're coming super late and they're getting all this bull crap. It is annoying, and I, I feel bad for the TVC collectors. Mm-hmm. None of us collect the TVC, but really. but at least the Amazon pre orders are starting to be fulfilled. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I should have pre ordered mine through Amazon. I so, got mine through Hasbro, so you know I'm going to see it in like three years. You'll probably see it in February. That's what I'm thinking, which is s- stupid because I got it in January. In Black Series news, the, um, the figures for the archive wave. Yes. With Revan, Leia. This is this is the last Lucasfilm 50th anniversary archive wave. Yes. These are now showing up at Targets mm-hmm. in the States. They showed up on the West Coast, according to Yakface.com. Yakface and Crim... No, uh, Kylo Collector is posting it, too. So that's a th- the other thing that I noticed specifically with that was that it is coming out with Wrecker. So before, when there have been Black Series drops at Target, if there's a main figure, like when um, the Clone Wars uh, figures came out through Target, the Archive Wave also came out at the same time, because they'll just throw in archives with main releases. So what would be in your best interest would be if you have your Wrecker DCPI still from Yak, call your Target and see when Wrecker's coming in, because when Wrecker comes in, those will be able to come in too. Most likely. Most likely. I can't guarantee that, but that's what I would predict is going to happen because we don't have a DCPI and a barcode yet for these figures, which I guess I'm a little bit confused because they were already seen on the shelf, so why couldn't you take a picture of the barcode? Because selfish. (laughs) Well, I don't know. I mean, I guess it's like when people report it to Yak, that's not the first thing they think of to do. Mm -hmm. It's the first thing that I think of. Usually too excited. Just because they just saw Because they found the freaking figure. Because, yeah, now we have people getting the 501. And that's the other thing, too, is that the, these figures were not scheduled to come out until December, according to Pulse. Mm-hmm. Which is... Hey, Jackson. Stupid. Yep. Did you see that Donda came out? No way! <laughs> yeah, right, right. It I just have, came out? I have it on Apple Music right now. <laughs> okay, hold on, everybody. <laughs> Yak also just... Tommy Yak posted. Can you check Yak? You okay. Just now? He posted on a Sunday. Everybody predicted this was going to happen. <laughs> was that it was not going to be... There's going to be more Target Star Wars figures in September. <laughs> no! Make sure you posted that. So, <laughs> the live reaction. <laughs> Holy crap, hold on. I got to see if this is true, bro. You're making me... I just if added you, it. If you don't know... I was just if listening to Kanye know, in the here, car. If you don't know, Kanye's like, new album was supposed to come back a while ago. And it never came out. And Jackson really likes Kanye. So he's very excited about the new album just coming out oh out of nowhere. Oh my gosh, it's finally out. I hope the album's I'm so trash. I'm so happy. I hope it's trash. I'm sorry, everybody, oh that you had to witness I'm that. I'm going to be listening to this all day. All day. All, all day. day. I'm posting it on my snap right now. That's so <laughs> Bro, that's a really cool album cover. <laughs> yeah, dude. Dude, that, just, that reaction that was, was sarcastic. so funny. That reaction was so... so There's 27 funny. songs on it, and one of the songs is blocked out, so you can't listen to it. Oh. Wait, well, I, I saw it on our friend's... I saw it on uh, our friend story he's one of our friends posted it on a snapchat story that donda came out everybody knew it was gonna happen on a sunday oh my gosh okay sorry so in other news really quick so the yak face post that i just saw i need to go back to that it's a target as we're shooting the podcast this it's time. a target collector spot it's called the fall geek out great more target comments. and friday september 24th star wars from hasbro revealed so there will be some star wars figures coming out in september this will be... Oh, yep. wait, no, it says... Oh, my God. From Friday, September 24th through October 3rd. Oh my well, God. September 3rd through October 3rd. Star, Star Wars' drop. first drop happens on September 24th. 
So that means okay. between the 24th and October 3rd, there could be even more drops. I'm, ju- I'm just okay. saying, I'm just saying, now hear me out. Now oh, me these out, will get announced at HasCon. Now hear me because out. Because HasCon no. is, is October... Why? Wait, 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 wait. wait. Hear no. me out. No! They won't. Hear me out! What? <laughs> what do you Visions want? Visions comes out the 22nd! What if they pull, like, a Marvel Legends and we get, like, Visions figures... We right won't. after. That'd be dope. That's too good to be true. I think it's it'll too be, good to be true, but it be I think so it'll be cool. Omega. Okay, it's gonna be Omega and Echo, and it's gonna be Target exclusive, and I'm gonna. Cry. No, it's gonna be Ome- It's gonna be. It's gonna be Dark Trooper. No, that doesn't come oh, until next, next year. year. It's gonna be Omega Crap. Echo. Okay, but then here's the thing I'm it's gonna concerned be, uh, about. Because wasn't Omega and Echo not s- supposed to be in the next like um, standard wave? Wasn't it's not it? a standard wave. It's a has. It's, well, it's no, 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 no. I get that. I get that. But like, I remember from Yak's post because there's code names for everything, and then there's upcoming releases. And in the upcoming releases, it was Omega Echo, Cobb Vanth, and um, oh my gosh, I Boba forget. Fett, but in his tuning. Boba Fett and the Rusty Gear and the Min Man Trooper. Those are like the upcoming releases. So I feel like a. Um, Wait, the Min Man Trooper. He already yeah. came out. Are they re-releasing it? The Jetta Stormtrooper. I apologize. Oh, okay, sorry, okay, okay. sorry. But, I was going to um, say, because that's one of my favorite... Hey, the Mimban Stormtrooper is one of Tommy's favorite trooper designs in all of Star Wars. It's wow. a really good thing, yeah. But, um... Okay, there is a possibility I, it could. Because here's the thing. We don't know. So they could release Omega and Echo through Target. Because Omega was already a Target-exclusive pop figure. And she is a main character... But like Target gets all the main characters. That is true. They I have a, they have Mando and Grogu two pack. They have they have Annie Obi. They yeah. have. I won't be mad if it's Omega and Echo though. I will not <clears throat> because I really want those figures for my Bad Batch shelf because I've been dying to get Omega and Echo because I'm so excited to like complete my Bad Batch. You're also excited to listen to Donda. I'm so excited to listen to Don Bath. <laughs> Some more uh, information on that uh, geek out thing. Um, the drops will be happening every Friday, and the um, uh, items are revealed at 8 a.m. CDT. Okay, so basically what they did for the Collector's Con, they're revealed at 8 a.m. Except it's not 10. every day of the week, it's just Fridays. It's only Fridays. I'm fine with that. Um, also, this information came from Yakface. Yakface. Yes. Okay. This information came from Yakface. Thank Reliable you, Yakface.com. The big the dog. Best source <clears throat> for your Star Wars Black Series news, Star Wars TVC news, Star Wars collectible news in general. Mm-hmm. So, I think we've covered everything as far mm-hmm. as the news, right? I, yes. I think there's only one more thing that we have to uh, we have to cover, and it's the fact that this ugly gentle giant statue. <laughs> For Ahsoka is coming out. Let's see if I can get that on the camera. See if I can get that on the camera. Focus, focus. Look how ugly that thing is. She got... She got you knocked him over! <laughs> <laughs> Jacob. She got spider eyes. That's been happening, Jacob. Well, no. That is oh, no, it, no, it's finally coming out. That's that's the thing. They're shipping out sometime soon. But Jacob, then, I could call you a mean word right now, uh, but I will not. Oh, figgies fell over. <laughs> it's not a whole avalanche. Don't gotta be mean. Okay. Before <laughs> Tommy does Black Series pickup, I just want to say that... um. Previously, because I don't really collect Funko Pops, to be um, completely honest. I only do for things I really like. So I originally, when the Clone Wars wave came out, I got Wrecker. And then I got Hunter when I was buying the um, Flame Trooper through GameStop. And so like those are like put in like random places around my dorm. And so it was Friday night, and it was like 12 o'clock at night, I want to say. And I was like, I just laid down to get in bed. And then Tommy texted me that he went, because there's a 24-7 CVS near our campus. And he was like, they just had all these Bad Batch Pop figures. And I sprung out of bed so fast because he wants Echo. And I was like, they might have Echo. They might have Echo. Because Echo is sold out everywhere. And the Bad Batch Pop figures sold out like that. And I don't know why. Because people really cool. liked them, I guess. So I ran to CVS, but they only had Tekken uh, Crosshair were the only other two there. Mm-hmm. And then they only also had Hunter because Wrecker was a GameStop exclusive but now I have the entire Bad Batch like displayed randomly throughout my dorm room and I think it's super cute and funny this is cute oh you think it's cute you know what guys you really hey it's okay to be a guy and say things are cute that's okay that's it it's 
<laughs> Alright, so let's, let's uh, <laughs> talk about the coolest thing. I have a lot of stuff coming in like this week for yep. Star Wars pickups. Um, but this past week I got um, this is from the red and black box line. This is a four pack. Um, I guess I'm gonna hop in the hops the hot seat. Yep, I'll yeah. Be so I got I'll this four pack. Um, this is one that I didn't know existed. Oops. Until recently. What did you do? I kicked the camera. Oh. So I, I didn't know this existed sorry. until recently. So it's a four pack. It's called the Senate Guards or something like that. No, isn't it Guardians like the Guardians of, of, Guardians of Evil? Guardians or Protectors of Evil. Whatever. Slipping name Anyways. Name. So it comes with um, a guardian from each like faction of mm -hmm. Star Wars. So the first one is the uh, the Republic. So this here you have so cool, the blue little higher senate guard from this one is from attack of the clones i want to say mm, or yeah. it might be the no not the end of phantom menace it might be i think it's uh i think it's attack of the clones yeah because don't we see them actually in attack <clears throat> of the clones and um revenge yes. of the Sith? okay i really like his rifle I really like how it slings over his shoulder. The rest of him, like the body and everything, is just the same as like your regular Imperial Royal Guard. Um, and then, of course, we have the Imperial Royal Guard. Um, pretty much the same as the last guy. Uh, but he has his little pike. And then they all have a little blaster pistol mm -hmm. that's like tucked away right here. Um, that's removable. If anybody has the the Carner Jacks figure, the Kier Kanos figure, I should say, um, it's it's the same as that mm -hmm. um and then we have the imperial shadow guard so this guy's actually from legends um and he's got this little lightsaber pike here um but yeah he's from legends uh he's a black royal guard basically um i don't know much about the shadow guards like the lore behind them i know that they are more elite than the red royal guards yeah. um and that they would do like covert missions for the emperor, mm -hmm. kind of like how the inquisitors are now. He dropped. He dropped the figure. <laughs> kind of how the inquisitors are now. Yeah. But uh, yeah. And then this guy, this is a Praetorian guard, um, for Supreme Leader Snoke. Uh, his little weapon splits into two. Oh, that's sick. which is dope. And that does it have a feature where one of them it disappears mid fight. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this guy actually has really really good articulation. Yeah, um, dude, that looks sick. Uh, but yeah, I really like this figure too. He's different than the common uh, Praetorian guards that you can get. Really? I think there's three different versions of the Praetorian guard at this point. Um, but yeah, so he's super cool as well. And yeah, that's that four pack I got. I bought it on Mercari. Um, I love shopping on Mercari. Yep. Um, we are not sponsored, but I actually I do sad. like support Mercari. I think that they're a great place to go to for like selling stuff, buying stuff yeah. because it's really easy to communicate with the seller back and forth. Yeah. Um, so that, that's kind of why I, I use that platform a lot. I feel like it's our generations of eBay at this point. Yeah, mm -hmm. kind of. Yeah. And then we, me and Jackson got one pickup. The we got the elite Praetorian guard, uh, and this was the last single box uh, figure that we needed to complete our red and black box collection. So that is cool. It's basically like every other Praetorian guard, but he has different weapons. So he's an exclusive somewhere. Can't yeah, remember where. Somewhere. I really like the um, Senate guard, the mm -hmm. blue one. I should. The blue say. one is dope. It's mm -hmm. such a unique character wow. that I would love if they made it again. Yeah, but like maybe like maybe they will for Attack, Attack of the Clones, Clones or Revenge of the Sith. True that. Mm -hmm. Um, <clears throat> so I think that about wraps everything up. I agree. This has been the thirteen thirteen podcast. This has been the thirteen thirteen podcast. I'm Tommy. I'm Jacob. And I'm Jackson. Please like and subscribe. Share us with your friends. We're almost at a hundred. If we get to a hundred, you'll get a nice special video of a room tour. And I'm Donda. <laughs> I'm Marquise. Actually, but in some serious news before we wrap up the episode, you're going to hear a lot of mic thumping. Actually, I'm just going to hold the mic. So, in 
some more serious news. Um, we are right on the cusp of hitting 100 YouTube subscribers. Ooh, ooh, ooh. This is so much more support than we ever could have expected to get or yes. than we ever could have um, thought we would get. So we wanted to genuinely thank you all for watching us, listening to us, supporting us, and just being a part of this community. We have a lot planned yes. for our 100 subscribers milestone. We are not going to say what we're doing just yet, but we do have several different things planned for our 100 subscribers. Yeah. Um, we're doing the room tour as promised, but there's more. There's more, and we are not movies. going to talk about it just yet. But That's down right, if you come to our birthday party, you're getting a gift bag. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so we're super stoked um, for that milestone. But again, thank you all for supporting us. We really, really genuinely appreciate it. And we're so grateful for each and every one of you. And uh, this has been, once again, the 1313 Podcast, the most mediocre podcast in the Star Wars universe. And we will see you in a have a chat later this week on Thursday with Star Wars only. Woo! Goodbye, everybody. Bye! Bye!